Hi friends, happy Monday. If you don't know what Monday is, it is Crime and Conviction Day. Yes, I was missing last week. Forgive me please, guys. So today I came back with a nice little switch up, a format that I hope that you guys appreciate. So let us jump right into the video. Now, before we start, I want to say hello to one of my watchers, one of my subscribers. Well, I don't think she's subscribed, but her mom is. The mommy is subscribed, and she told me that you watch my crime and conviction videos and you love them. So, hello, Sienna. Happy Monday. I hope your weekend was great and that you're doing so wonderful. And speaking of mommy, Shelly's Karina, I want to say thank you so much for being subscribed for liking, for watching, and I want to tell all of my subscribers that you guys can check out Shelly's Corner, that is Mommy's YouTube channel. Um, I will be linking it in my description down below. You guys can check it out. She's like a lifestyle vlog. She does challenges and stuff like that on her channel. So you guys can just hop on over there and check her out and click that subscribe button and help her to build her channel as well. Now, back to the format. Because I was missing last week, and I'm forgiven for that, right? I came back with five cases. So I do remember saying that some cases are too short for me to just say by themselves. What I'm gonna do today is compile these cases. No, it is massacres and it is um riots and just five random cases that i believe needs a bit more attention you know so based on the format i won't be giving my opinion at the end of the video like the way that i usually do it i talk about the case then i give my opinion and then i end the video so because it's all five cases i will be just talking about it and then moving on i will be kind of giving my personal you know chip in here and there but it will mainly just be facts so we're gonna be doing this oh my oh, i love to say so youtubers always saying so wow i'm going to be starting off from the um most furthest so it's chronological order so from 1980 which is the first case to 2005 which is the last case so let us jump right into it starting off with the gold street massacre the gold street massacre of 1980 this was the year of the bloodiest election ever in Jamaican history with over 800 lives being stolen due to political violence. This was the year that the JLP rose to power. This was also two years after the Green Bay Massacre. Also, I have a video on the Green Bay Massacre, so if you guys want to check that out, I will be leaving a card above. Or you can just check out my crime and conviction playlist on my channel i have other videos on there now the green bay massacre is actually tied to what happened on gold street in 1980. a motorcade led by michael manley who was not only the prime minister at the time and the leader of the people's national party but he was also the member of parliament for central kingston came under attack not by bullets but by stones. These stones were thrown to prevent Mr. Manley from touring the predominantly JLP community of Southside. And how the Green Bay Massacre connects? If you guys don't remember, Southside was the community that the men involved in the Green Bay Massacre were hailed from. Some reports said that six days after this stone incident, some reports said that it was that very night on April 20th, 1980. Gunmen dressed in black opened fire on a dance that JLP supporters were having a good time at. 
it is said that these gunmen actually targeted some persons and the aim was to raid these houses to kill the occupants and then to set the houses on fire but when the gunmen went into the community they realized that most of these targeted persons were at the dance so obviously and unfortunately they attacked the dance the attack lasted a while and after this rain of bullets well depending on which source you read it is said that five persons were left lifeless with over a dozen injured or it could have been eight persons that were left lifeless with three injuries it doesn't matter how many persons were left lifeless it was still a senseless act the gunmen had thought that they killed franklin chubby dread allen who was the area leader at the time but this was not so after multiple attempts on franklin's life his death demon caught up with him in 2005 that was over 20 years after this incident it is said that most members of the community weren't armed before this incident, but because of it, the youths got more vicious. The end result of this massacre, you might ask? Well, I could not find one. And I'm not surprised that I couldn't either. There was a slight mention of a Christopher Henry, also known as Natty Chris, being implicated in this incident, but I could not find a solid article. And trust me, I looked. Now, fast forward to the year 1997, the year of the condom prison riots, which is one of the riots that I personally feel as if it is the most ignorant riot in Jamaica's history. It was started due to sheer homophobia, hate, and of course, ignorance. So August 1997, the then Commissioner of Corrections, Colonel John Pescard, announced that they will be issuing condoms to both inmates and correctional officers based on the increase of HIV cases. Now the details of what happened after both the prisoners and correctional officers of the Tower Street Correctional Center and the St. Catherine Adult Correctional Center is taken from accounts from former inmates including Henzel Muir and Moses Treston. The links to their interviews will be below in my description as with all of my other links as per usual. Following this announcement, the homosexual inmates could be heard rejoicing. However, for the correctional officers, they did not take this very well because to them, it insinuated that they were having relations with the inmates. All the correctional officers, except for the ones guarding the towers, walked off the job. It is said that before walking out, some of the correctional officers opened the cells, but it is reported that the prisoners themselves broke out. As expected, pandemonium broke inside the prisons. Unfortunately, they attacked the men suspected of being a part of the lgbtq community in saint catherine two men were burnt alive prisoners also used this opportunity to exact revenge and at some point in this riot it became a political war makeshift weapons were used stones bottles even hands after three days of rioting the government finally sent policemen and troops into the correctional facilities to restore order. And also the correctional officers that were on strike returned to work. At the end of it all, 14 men were found dead and over 40 injured. But one former inmate said that the death toll was double that amount but we will never know, will we? Authorities launched an investigation and by midweek, 15 prisoners were charged from the Tower Street prison and 10 men 
were charged from St. Catherine. Well, that was pretty quick. Now, four years later, in 2001, we have a massacre more popularly known as the Brayton Seven. On March 14, 2001, officers from the Crime Management Unit and the St. Catherine Salt Division approached a two-bedroom house in Brayton, St. Catherine. Several moments after, loud explosions were heard and of course, this attracted the attention of residents and a crowd gathered. Men could be heard begging for their lives, then silence. Seven young men were left dead that were between the ages of 15 to 20. From this massacre, police recovered four illegal firearms that were used in several murders. Renita Adams, yes, the Renita Adams, was the head of the crime management unit at that time and he defended the actions saying that it was self-defense. He reported that they went to arrest one of the seven men, Christopher Grant, for murder, but were met with gunfire. However, witnesses did come forward to say that these men did surrender themselves and that this was nothing short of a slaughter. Reports actually did back up what the residents had to say because these men were shot in the head, execution style, with additional bullet wounds to the body. Five of the officers that took part in this incident were charged, but in 2005, they were cleared of all charges. Again, no surprise there. May 7, 2003, Crawl, Clarendon. Another case involving Mr. Renito Adams, and I'm sure you guys can guess the outcome of this one. At about 5.30 p.m., members of the crime management unit received reports that a known gang member, Bashington Douglas, was at the home of a resident, Angela Douglas. The police officers approached the property, but on their official report, it is said that it was a shootout. Four persons, two males and two females, including the owner of the residence, were left lifeless. Of course, the members of the community had a different take on what happened that afternoon. According to the residents, a white unmarked van drove up to the residents with no opposition. Police got out of this van and unprovoked began to fire at persons sitting on the veranda. Two men were cornered and shot and three females, including a nine-year-old, Shanice, ran inside and hid under the bed. More gunshots were heard. The police then demanded that the females came from under the bed. Shanice, the nine-year-old that was probably terrified at this point, was taken from her mother and told to wait outside under a tree for her. Unfortunately, the next time Shanice saw her mother, she was being taken out of the house lifeless. Following this incident, a CMU member did come forward to state that he did witness the killing of an unarmed man. The post-mortem autopsies done on these four bodies did confirm that all these victims were shot at close range, debunking the police's reports. Renita Adams, two corporals, and three constables were removed from frontline duties as investigations began for this incident. Eventually, they were charged with non-capital murder, but surprise, surprise, in December of 2004, 
five, they were cleared of these charges. Renita Adams was then ordered to undergo counseling and a psychiatric evaluation before being reinstated into office six months after. By the way, the known gangster Barrington Douglas was not amongst these four persons killed at Crawl that evening. Now it is time for us to move on to the final case for today, which is the Barnes Avenue Massacre, which happened in 2005. Wednesday, the 5th of October 2005, residents were awoken to screams and pleads for help from 10 year old Sasha Gay Brown. Why was she pleading for help, you might ask? Well, her residence was set on fire and she was inside. This was the act of gunmen and inside the house were her grandparents and her aunt. Sasha had managed to climb a grill on her veranda and she was screaming and pleading for help. When the residents realized what was happening and they went to assist, they were shot at by gunmen guarding the house that was on fire. They were making sure that whoever was inside could not get out and whoever was outside could not assist. It was reported that Sasha was screaming until her voice faded and she perished in the fire. All four members of this family were burnt to death and that is a horrible way to go. Horrible. Some residents actually tried to seek help from soldiers that were posted nearby, but the soldiers' claim was that they could not assist because there was no police nearby. That makes no sense to me, but I, I, I guess. Apparently, this fire was started as reprisal for a gang shooting a few days before. You see, gangs from Barnes Avenue and Ramsey Road were feuding and unfortunately this family of four was just casualties of war in their eyes. Even the family dog was shot. The gang that allegedly carried out the senseless murder has since been eradicated and residents from the community say that they feel much safer. And with that, my friends, is the end of this week's crime and conviction. What are your thoughts on any of the cases? And also, what do you think about this format? Did you guys like it? Did you not like it? Of course, I'm going to have my regular sit down and chat as it relates to one person or one incident. But I kind of just wanted to test the waters with this. So you guys can tell me if you liked it or not. Nah, if I should just scrap it all together and just, you know, throw away that idea, girl. But thank you guys so, so much for watching as per usual. The links to all of these crimes will be linked down in my description if you guys want to read up on it for yourselves. And I'm so close to 2K, I can almost taste it. I don't know if I will have 2K by the time I post this, but if I do, yay me! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, I'm so freaking happy. <laughs> Anyways, guys, remember to be a beautiful soul, not just a gorgeous face. And until I see you guys next Monday, mwah, miss you guys already. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye. Christopher Grant. These men surrendered, surrendered. Members of the gym of the crime.